All right, so um, I'm here with Adam Bien for our um, night hacking session in Munich. Um, thanks for thanks for driving across town to to do the session. And we're in um, Tony's Tony's studio slash training session again. He's he's hiding in the background. Say hi, Tony. Hi. All right, you're out of focus, but close enough. <laughs> so um, well, first, why don't you why don't you say a little bit about um, kind of actually I, maybe I should introduce you. So. Um, Adam Bien is most known for, oh, we even have a slide introducing you. All right, I'll put that up. There we go. Most known for doing a lot of Java EE work, Java SE work. I've even seen you posting on JavaFX and, you know, hacking around and talking about the technology on your blog. Um, and then you do air hacks. What, tell us a little bit about what air hacks is. So air hacks, um, just to minimize my travel, I, I organize three times a year a um, Java E workshop at Munich Airport. And um, interesting story. So people came all over the world the last time. And yes, yeah, three, three times a year, uh, three to four days, um, just Java E hacking. Java E workshop. Very cool. And you get a lot of people coming out to the sessions? Yeah, uh, last time about 50, uh, 50 people all, all around the world. So we have already the biggest room. Uh, from Munich Airport. That's good. So, yeah. so, so you go to the airport, and instead of going to the airport to travel somewhere, yeah. you go to the airport yeah. to meet people and go home. Yeah, <laughs> 200 meters from the terminal. That's the idea. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so, what sort of what sort of stuff have you been working on recently? What sort of um, projects and technologies? Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm I'm working almost exclusively in Java E space, Java E and Java SE space, and uh, in some projects we're actually using JavaFX uh, because you always need a kind of UI for your backend stuff. Mm -hmm. And I actually did a uh, lots of Swing stuff back then, and uh, JavaFX is just a natural re replacement. And in some projects, it's just um, I think there's lots of advantages over HTML HTML5, for instance. And it's, um, yeah, so this is in some project using JavaFX and on the, on the back end, almost Java E actually. Okay, very cool. Um, so besides just Java, what, what other sort of hobbies do you have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the problem, the curse with Java is if you really like Java, you have no time for so anything you're, else. You're, you're a true hacker. You hack on Java and you study Java. I study, I try to learn Java and the problem is Regardless how much I'm, I'm learning it, it is just impossible to know everything. So um, my hobby was back then NetBeans, but now I'm using NetBeans all the time. So it's like uh, <laughs> professional, <laughs> professional stuff again. So um, I have actually no real hobbies. Um, one time I would probably would like to learn guitar or something, and uh, but I have no time yet. And I exactly know if I would start to do it right now. Uh, it would be crazy. No sleeping, just guitar playing and, and Java hacking. So I just <laughs> only thinking focus about on, this. Focus, yeah, focus on, on Java, you, nothing else. What you do good? Java and sleeping and sleeping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh, oh the yeah. guitar, right? This is cool. This is from. Oh, from nice. This is a solution from uh, Tony Apple, a uh, NetBeans Dream Team member. Yes, um, this could work. Wow, uh -huh. Very, that's pretty good for your first. Try. Yeah, yeah, this was perfect, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. All right, so what we were thinking we'd, we'd do today was um, show some of the projects you've worked working on. Yes, uh, my idea is actually I gave a talk in Java 1 about stress testing, yeah. and I got uh, lots of feedback about going more deeply into that. So what we can do today is I can, um, we can walk through an open source project of mine called Lightfish. It monitors Java applications um, and running on, light, um, or on Glassfish. And I could probably hack a very little Java application and try to stress test with Lightfish. Everything live and unprepared because I had really no idea what, what will happen here. Yeah, that's how, that's how we like it is to keep things <laughs> crazy, live, unprepared. Perfect. Just see so what comes out. Perfect here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's perfect for exactly how we operate. Okay, so I've I've um, tricked out your desktop with um, video, so you can see oh, wrong video. Okay, perfect. So, so you can see us while we're while we're doing hacking. That's the right video. No, that's the wrong one. I chose source A instead of source B. Okay, your, okay. your computer your computer is Octane. My, my computer is Octane. Yes. Yeah. So can I start with hacking, or are you just right, there we go. searching for your sources? 
Perfect. Um, all right, yeah, so we can start with hacking. Thank you very much. So um, two books, so you can just, but this is the most important slide. Um, a few lines of Java code say more than 1,000 slides. So um, <laughs> this is my famous last slide. And thank you. That was an excellent talk. Uh, thank Good you very much. You, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> and, but now it actually starts. And um, I would like to fire off NetBeans. I just used the development build because I tested. This is the only reason. You, I could also go with the production release, but... Um, okay, so you're, you're on the bleeding edge. Yeah, for stuff like that, I'm using the bleeding edge, and for time to time, we will probably see an error, NetBeans error, then we will submit the error on the fly. So we have cool. a great internet connection from Tony Studios, so um, we could do that. So this is actually Lightfish, and there are two parts. There's a light view written with JavaFX, mm -hmm. and the light fish is written, this is actually the backend, very simple application which monitors periodically GlassFish, and GlassFish um, exposes all the monitoring da data via REST. And funny story, I started, I actually wrote the application about five times for my customers from scratch, because I don't know why, but um, unit testing and integration testing seems to be important, and stress testing not at all. For some reasons, uh, people are thinking that uh, single-threaded unit tests are sufficient to prove the right functionality of Java applications. So what I what I did, I um, I wrote small scripts which um, which persisted the um, the monitoring data, and after the fifth time, become a little bit tedious. So I just so you finally actually refactored it into a real framework that you can reuse. Yeah, the problem with refactoring, I, I had to sign lots of NDAs and not always sure what it means. Uh, so I, I just see. wrote so everything it from scratch. From scratch. <laughs> and actually, I was. Um, so you know, you know, uh, one of my um, first experiences as a, a programmer when I was in um, when I was learning in elementary school. So I was writing. I was I was hacking. Um, this was before Java, this was like in Pascal. I was hacking on um, my really old computer, writing a great editing software for my, for my teachers. And I had, a, I had a hardware failure. I lost all my data for like three months worth of work. Okay. But it taught me that when I, when I went and rewrote it, it was so much better. And I got it done. I got to, what I originally did, did in three weeks, done in three months, done in two weeks. Perfect. So what I found is, you know, code is cheap. You can always rewrite code. Yep. But the ideas and the skills you learn coding are what really counts. So how was your experience rewriting this program five times? Um, I've never rewritten the same program five times yet. It wasn't the same program. But program uh, there were five hacks, and the Lightfish is the best one, I think, okay. because it is uh, my program, and it just is more generic. The other yeah. one was just written for for certain specific for specific a customer specific customers. Yeah. Um, but in, in your case, I would just just write a very little uh, cron script, which deletes all your machine every two weeks or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> every three weeks, you know, it's not that hard. We move asterisk slash or something, and it should work. So it would be actually a business idea. Yeah, like yeah, handband, so handband on steroids or something. Yeah, the, <laughs> it forces you at the end of each iteration. It. Psh. Yeah, <laughs> this 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 Tony. This would be a great story for a training um, Scrum Master uh, certification, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Speeding up the yeah, exactly. So um, and uh, story is getting even funnier. So um, I actually do lots of my open source projects in trains. So I travel a lot, not with bicycles, because I think hacking on bicycle is really hard. Mm -hmm. Without voice recognition, right, or something, yeah. and uh, on trains is really, uh, really, really nice. So uh, I had three, three hour time between Frankfurt and Munich, three and a half, I think, or three to three and a half hour time to, to hack something, and I got the idea. Okay, I have no time after the train, but right now I have to do things done. And my first idea was to start with Java SE, and then I found okay, with Java SE, I will have to write Java Util Timer to periodically mm -hmm. start the timer, then I will have to use JPA persistence, so there's only three, three lines of code just to boot up the entity manager. It's like, if I do it with Java E itself, it is like a breed. So I just have one annotation at schedule, one annotation inject entity manager, and I'm actually done with the proof of concept. So I just, uh, after a few lines of Java SE code, I dropped the project, I recreated it from scratch for Java E, and what Lightfish did, it, um, it uh, captured the uh, Glassfish data and persisted in a broad table. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, so you can perform stress tests, 
and after a night you can just um, connect to, with the table with um, Jasper reports or whatever bird reports or whatever you have just to see how your application performs or whether it is stable or not. It's, it's more about robustness, not uh, performance. Yeah, so you're collecting all the data during yeah. the runs during the day yeah. and then you can inspect it and yeah. report on it at night using um, this tool. Yeah, but then the idea came, I would like to see it in real time because it's more exciting. So uh, collecting is the, the major use case, but real time data is more exciting. And I thought which technology to use and then the decision was made JavaFX. And it was extremely simple with some charts and a table and data binding. I did it, I think, in a half an hour. I had one chart with a table, data, and uh, with service. And, um, and um, then I had the, as an interesting story, the first feedback of Lightfish, one guy asked me um, why I didn't um, wrote uh, Lightfish with, um, with Java, JavaScript, HTML5, and Raphael GS is um, Java uh, JavaScript mm -hmm. framework. And I told him I had only one hour time for the proof of concept. <laughs> and he said, okay, then this is understandable. So it was not the right choice. And this so is why he, 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 he's, so he was actually proving um, the point that actually JavaFX is easier to get started with and yeah, build applications. Absolutely, with I show him that the code is okay. If you, you can revert it with JavaScript and it will be simple, then, 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 then it's right now, I would just do it. I don't care. But he was okay, no, no way, right? No way. And this is one of, yeah, one of my points of why JavaFX is great, because it's Java. And most of my projects, if we have in backend Java, it mm -hmm. would be nice to have Java in the front end as well, cool. to be able to debug and profile everything from, 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 from the UI to the backend. Because, uh, you know, mixing languages is cool, but not very pragmatic in bigger projects. And particularly not in projects, nine to five projects. So I think we can hack something, right? Other, yeah. Otherwise it would be uh, night talking and that's not, Night, night well, we can we can do some night night talking during okay. the day. Okay, so I think I think it's I think it's night in um, Latin America. Yeah. yeah. So so we're we're night hacking in some part of the world. Yeah. <clears throat> so come night hacks. Oh, it's a uh, James Gosling night, right? So we can just keep yeah. the night hacks, so there will be no problem with him. Yep. Okay. Yeah. No, he's he's he was our first night hacker. Okay. Group ID, uh, calm night, hex, and uh, just some stress. So I will start with a Maven project, why not? We have NetBeans, and Tony has internet, so it could work. And um, I will just run it, and I expect to have an application deployed on Glassfish, Java application with actually a single JSP. And the idea would be to stress test that with okay. JMeter and Lightfish. Oh, failed. Not able to start. Then I have a very important command, kill Java. <laughs> Some process is running from today morning. I hack something and I think my pods was... That's a, that's, a, that's a nice... Um tool so you know you have all these random Java processes and you go hunt them down slowly? Not slowly, very fast. Bam. Uh, uh, kill, <laughs> kill minus nine. Uh, <laughs> minus nine Java, this is actually. Yeah. I need to get that for before I start my presentations because I always yeah. find I have old processes running. Actually it is kill kill all I think minus nine Java. This is how it operates. Nice. So it's the most important. But it was it's useful enough you created an uh, alias for it. Yeah, but it doesn't like to start Lightfish, which is actually Glassfish, which is very, very sad. Can it be that you use some of my 8080 ports? Um, if not, we could just, because it, my Glassfish doesn't like to start, and I think it can be something it, does to do it say, with this. Does it say the port is in use? On host 00, zero uh, it doesn't. It invalid, doesn't. says invalid property. Yeah, but I didn't did anything. Doesn't care. I will just show, show you the source code from from Lightfish. So um, the um, the um, organization of Lightfish is just uh, consists of components, and the components are uh, organized always the same way. So mm -hmm. boundary is um, exposes to the outside world the services, control is some logic, and entity is the persistence. And the uh, most important um, um, uh, important stuff is the um, 
monitoring component. And um, the uh, monitoring controller is the heart of Lightfish. And what it does, it, uh, it, it just gathers these snapshots. And um, here you have the schedule expression, so it can set up the, um, you can set up to gather the data every few seconds. And um, it takes the data and persists the data in a, in an entity. And the entity is actually a very simple one. It's just a, a snapshot with some data like used heap, heap size, thread count, peak thread count, whether threads are busy or not, number of committed transactions and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I just would like to see the connection pools and applications. And there is actually very easy to, to extend. In fact, some of the, um, of the Red Hat Jabos guys asked me at Java 1 whether they could extend Lightfish for Jabos. And if you replace this class, you should be able to gather the statistic for Jabos or Tommy or whatever. So point to any application server. Yeah, yeah. there is just, um, you know, every application server has the same data, but the, the format is different. So and this actually is the, is the source code for this um, open source? Is it yes, well, entirely. And um, it is actually Lightfish is the um, page with an intro introductory video okay. and on you have on github if you go to my github page github you should find lightfish and everything is so what you saw already um, this is everything exposed on uh, on github as well um, mm -hmm. Under Apache license, cool. And the and idea there's a, there's a link to that on the um, Lightfish page. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'm so gonna I'm gonna send people the Lightfish so they can um, try it out and hack along with us. Yeah, and um, actually, uh, it, for me, it already paid off because Lightfish didn't support it uh, authentication uh, because it didn't need it for, for for my projects because it was an integration stage. Yeah, and someone contributed the SSL and authentication code. So it was actually yeah, nice, very good for nice. me. So right, right now it is <laughs> even supports SSL. So open source rocks actually. If you are lazy, you should expose everything. You know. So, um, so this is the backend. A little bit boring for you. More exciting is the light view. Okay. So the light view is a Java X part, and the Java X part this actually starts with uh, you see the Apache license takes 80% of the source code. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> It starts like um, an application, yeah. and uh, the idea is it is web start, uh, it is a standalone and applet. So I, I package it three times, and the main idea was as well to show how to build more more enterprise Java X applications because at the beginning there was actually no good maiden integration. So I did that and and wrote actually article Java magazine as well mm -hmm. how to do, how to do that and. There's nothing better than open source application because I mean you can you can you just, just share, share, the show, share the code and share your work, yeah. yeah without yeah, any absolutely. any problems. And the interesting story is in Java X. If you start with Java X, you um, you could use a main method, but actually the, the, the whole point is to use the launch method mm -hmm. because um, whether, whenever it is um, an applet and, and web start or main uh, class, it just uh, just delegates to the launch. This is the first. First idea, and the second idea was just do it right. Or right, I mean, I just like instead of hack it. Oh, the reasons behind. As I started with uh, Lightfish, it was very early, and what I, I expected is to, uh, to 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 have some challenges and problems. And the idea was just to to um, build encapsulated modules. So if a problem occurs, I will be able to identify it more easily. So I tried to separate the uh, the view from the backend logic from day one. And actually I got lots of problems with comet style communication with, with backend. It turned out there were some problems with, with long polling and stuff like that. So it was actually a good choice to separate that. Mm -hmm. So everything starts with a presenter. So the Lightfish is built in model view presenter fashion. So what it means, the, um, if you look at the presenter, the presenter, presenter implements an interface, which is a usual a lot, except there is a pr purpose, and the purpose of this in interface is to specify what the backend is able to deliver. 
So actually, if you would okay. like to monitor uh, um, a given property, you just have to extend this interface and then mm -hmm. write a view component for mm -hmm. that. This was the idea to separate that. And uh, what you see is uh, most of the uh, properties are read-only properties. Yeah. With, um, as, as you probably see, is a property, so I can use binding for that. And um, this actually simplified things a lot. Because if you think about this, um, one single property um, makes the interface very narrow. Usually, I would have to have an um, interface with, an, with, uh, with a method like give me a property, you get a float back, but you have constantly to pull the interface, so there's a lot more infrastructure. So this, this um, gives you properties, gives you event callbacks, um, exactly. without having to actually write all the event listeners yes. and adding event handlers and all the code exactly. you normally need to do for that. Exactly. So um, I would say... So you do you think this would also be useful in some of your Java EE programs, having property support? Yes, and actually thought already just to reuse the uh, Java Vic stuff uh, for, 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 for the backend logic. And actually, so, so I, hope, I, hope, I hope Mark Reinhold is watching us. Yes, but yeah, I'm, sure, <laughs> I, I'm sure he, he properties, does. Properties, Mark. We want properties in, in Java. But Mark loves properties, so whenever, yeah, right? Whenever yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just want to ask her. He, he, he would like to introduce properties since 1995. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's get them in. <laughs> Java 9. Java 9, or Java 8, actually. Now that they don't have chicks, so they have enough time to build properties, you know? Yeah, yeah, possibly. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can hack on. I'll, I'll find somebody who wants to do properties, and we'll do a um, Project Coin style implementation in the compiler. Yeah. <laughs> in, uh, in, it will be in Apple Valley, then. We have Apple uh, Wood, Apple IT, <laughs> and <laughs> Apple Valley is the stuff where properties are built. But exactly what you said, um, actually, this interface is everything, but usually you will get 10 or 15 interfaces to cover everything. And this mm -hmm. is what I like in Java Vix a lot. Um, it, 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 it minimizes the amount of code necessary. And actually, I have to say, I'm one of the few crazy guys. You are the, uh, another one, I guess. I really like JavaFX script. And I actually, uh, it would be e even better to condense the code even more. I actually, I wrote a whole book about Java, Java, JavaFX script. <laughs> and then I got a call from, from, from Java One <laughs> Oracle and saying, your talk is great, but uh, we will kill that Java Big Script. Do you still would like to talk about this? It's like the talk is not a problem. The book is another problem. So I called the publisher and said, okay, we have to cancel the book. But, oh, uh, uh, but still... Um, That's horrible. Uh, no problem. Um, uh, I mean, um, yeah, it's really no problem. So um, you, you don't make money with books anyway. So no, whether they are no. published or not, it's just... No, doesn't but it's, it's a lot of time. It's, it's, it's a lot of time. an investment of time to write a book. But it was good for me just to play with uh, Java Vix uh, a little bit more. And um, right now, I just apply the same ideas to Java Vix and Java. But yeah, yeah. So we're trying to um, get the new JavaFX script visage working with JavaFX 2. Um, and that will be an option. I mean, Java APIs are good because everybody can use them. Mm -hmm. You don't need to learn a new language. Mm -hmm. And for the same reason, you have you know, people writing um, MVC frameworks and server-side code in Groovy like Rails or Scala, um, you know, Lyft or um, <clears throat> what was, what's, the, what's the more recent one? Do, 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 do. Forgetting the Scala. Uh, Scala is play, 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 play. Uh, play Griffin. Framework. Uh, Griffin's, Griffin's a more of a client framework mm, okay. for Groovy. But for the same reason people are doing those languages on the server side, um, nobody has a good client side language. Mm -hmm. Which has dedicated features like um, you know animation syntaxes, um, built-in properties, um, uh, closures, closures. But those those belong in the base language yeah. regardless. But I think there's still a place for a you know, JVM language specific to user yes. interfaces. This was absolutely my opinion as well. And, and actually, I like JavaScript a lot because it's very concise. Look a little bit like a JSON, so it wasn't yeah. to totally weird syntax. The only problem was uh, NetBeans support. This one was not as great as JavaScript or Ruby either, so it was just crazy. So like the, you know, the Sun Microsystem programming language wasn't well supported with NetBeans. And <laughs> it's just, but this would be my only complaint, but it, it works great. I did actually some projects with that, so it works really, really well. Yes, so back to reality right now. Yeah. So we have okay. Java with uh, Lightfish, Lightfish, and the um, Lightfish is not that interesting, so I think instead of Launching Lightfish, we will stay in Java Vix right now. Okay. So we have the uh, bindings, and bindings, um, there's just an interface to, to make more clear which 
backend um, which um, backend properties are actually supported, mm -hmm. and I have the um, dashboard presenter which actually implements that. As you can see, this is all, all simple properties and observable sets collections, which are also great if you would like to use uh, tables, for instance. It's a lot easier than Swing, for instance. So, um, and what's also very very useful, what I use here are services, and what. Um, what a service here, a snapshot service, and what service does, my snapshot service extends JavaFX service, and JavaFX service is something like Swing Worker, I would say. Um, it is able um, to fetch, to create tasks, in, and what the task does, it just connects with the backend, which is, which is a snapshot fetcher, and this is actually a very simple call, a get call, which uh, gets the snapshot from the backend, mm -hmm. and um, the snapshot is actually identical to the entity you saw before, but this is from different uh, namespaces. There is a little bit decoupling, so there are the same properties, the same names, but it comes from other projects, so there is not, it's not the same entity. But this is the single liner from Jersey. I will replace it later with, uh, with Jax or S2O, but it um, just um, deserialized the XML stream to the snapshot, and the snapshot is exposed um, with the snapshot provider. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the service. So um, whenever a new snapshot is ready to be displayed, it's just, um, it arrives in the presenter. And the presenter has a restart service. So it, I've just say, okay, if it's, it is running um, and restarting, it will cancel reset and then start fetching. And to start fetching, it just creates the snapshot provider, the service with the URI. The URI is bound to the to the to the UI again. So on every change of the URI, the service is automatically restarted, which is actually very 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 uh, simple to do. Service start, and then I just use you see another technique in in yep. Java X, a value property at listeners. I will never change do something about this, and in this case, it just invokes on snapshot arrival. Very For nice. instance, in Java X script, there would be just one method. I would just uh, yeah, uh, you just, know, it just have a closure. say whatever <laughs> happened, just invoke that. But you know, so this all this code will get shorter once um, we have closures. Yes, a lot shorter. So Java eight will make this a lot nicer. And what would also make nicer is uh, Project Nashorn. I think if it comes JDK one eight and uh, you know Java X with Nashorn and closure, it, it is actually a dream. I think so. What you can do is it will change a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and on snapshot arrival, so we what through what do you, what do I do right now is I just am fetching the usual properties. So this is the converter between um, the integer and the uh, integer property in Java X. So it is um, a little bit. I'm just thinking about to make it more concise because a little bit get us on set invocation, but yeah, um, it is um, very very old code. But um, this should be probably somehow easier to just to All right, all right. so we got a question for you from Marcus. Yes. So have you tried um, Lightfish on 3122 build yet? Yes, I tried it. So um, should I answer with Twitter? No, you do it for well, me. Well, I mean, he's, he's listening to you talk. Ah, okay, thank you. I, was, I, I thought this is a, a Twitter stream. Is it a Twitter stream? It's, so this is a Twitter social stream. Okay. But, I mean, everybody here is watching the video, okay. obviously. Yes, I tried it and it seems to so, work. So, talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> I tried, it seems to work. Um, but uh, if, uh, if, I, uh, if you manage to start uh, Glassfish, then it will work. Yeah, so getting Glassfish to start was a little hiccup. Yes. So, um, I get, the, um, I get the, um, the entities and then what you see right here is um, what Glassfish does, it adds the um, the the uh, snapshots to the lists, which mm -hmm. is going to be displayed in in a table, and um, yeah, there are, yeah, I have what a presenter is um, for for the main logic, and escalation presenter is um, responsible for managing a scripts. So right now is a little bit hidden functionality in Lightfish. What you can do on the fly, you can register JavaScript filters to a Lightfish on the fly. They are they are uh, managed on the server, and what they do is you can you can set up um, in real time channels. You can say when heap is higher than one gig, notify me, and mm -hmm. you can you can create those filters on the fly. I like call oh, it escalation channels. You can so you can subscribe to the filter by rest, yeah. and this is um, covered by Lightfish as well. The whole uh, the whole um, yeah, that's logic. a nice way of um, kind of having server side filtering and querying yeah. to fetch 
um, custom data back from like escalations. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So let's. Um, so we have the whole light switch is organized in model. It's just the uh, are the plain POJOS entities. The script, which is actually the JavaScript, is just name and content, and the um, annotations are JXP annotations, just necessary to be able to serialize and deserialize data. And yeah, so the snapshots, the presenter is actually the core presentation mm -hmm. logic. And what's also nice with presenter is, um, with presenter is um, what you can do with presenter, you can e easier unit test that. Because if you have the presenter, you can just write unit tests and, uh, and just uh, mock out the properties without firing it to view, which was also nice in my case, because I, tr I, I w wanted to test the backend logic without uh, the view rendering. Mm-hmm. Need a bigger line. So his um, stream crashed. Oh, his, <laughs> his stream or your stream? His. his. Oh, okay, who cares about him? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know Marcus, so no problem. <laughs> It's my fear. It's my, it's yeah, yeah. My so, fear. so, um, so, Marcus, don't, weren't you weren't you supposed to be here in person? <laughs> <laughs> so you know, Marcus, I, I, I didn't get I, I didn't get one. So if you if you want to get one of these stickers, I, I would like. So you have to show up in person. Oh, thank you. And this is a this is limited edition. So only only if you actually are brave enough to come on the, the stream and, and chat with folks online do you get one of those. Perfect. Thank you. You have one. <laughs> okay. All right. Barkas is probably hopping in his car, driving down. Here. Yeah. yeah. Because life is. You know, you can come for this afternoon with Tony. We're gonna to do Tony's at three three p.m. I think. Yeah. 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 So come by for Tony's recording, Marcus, and we'll. We'll and hang out then. And take, take the glassfish with you and the lightfish also. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. May the lightfish be with you, right? Yeah. So, view, very important in JavaFX case. Yes. So, um, without view, there is no UI, I think. So, we have to talk a little bit about the view. And uh, the most crazy thing in JavaFX is the browser. So, there is an embedded WebKit. And the idea of that is, so the... Um, administration interface of Lightfish was in JSF, was written in JSF, and I was just too lazy to, to rewrite it in JavaFX, so I just embedded that in um, as, oh, as a web, web view. Web view. Nice. So at and the, in top I have the web view, and, and the interesting story with the web view is um, um, it looks almost like JavaFX because I just um, adjusted the CSS. So it is. It looks almost exactly the buttons. Everything of the web web view. They all look like the native buttons in my applications because mm -hmm. you can skin JavaFX with uh, CSS, and if you use the same style sheet, this is almost identical. Oh, nice. So you're using styling on CSS for JavaFX, styling on CSS for um, J um, JSF, yeah, and then you can make them yeah. styled similarly. Yeah, nice. No, similar, identical. So identical. Yeah. <laughs> really, it is, it's crazy, and. Um, and yeah, the web view is very, very simple. This is actually the exciting stuff. You just need to create the web view, mm -hmm. the engine, mm -hmm. and the engine is, is, is the, the parsing part, and the web view is the rendering part. Yeah, I think aware of that, right? Mm -hmm. Web views. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that's actually the, the only thing what, what happens is the, um, the, the progress, uh, the progress um, bar. And what I do here is I have the possibility to install Lightfish from the web page. And I don't like to install already install Lightfish. So what I do with the web view is I, do, I, I remove some links from GSF, which is very very easy. It's just simple DOM operation. So you can actually manipulate. Uh, okay. So if you view it on the web page, you're going to see additional stuff to get Lightfish. Yes. And if you view it inside Lightfish, those mm -hmm. are all hidden by doing DOM manipulation. Yeah. And this is very simple. This is the entire code. Lightfish uh, admin pa uh, page get element by ID. What I do, I get the live view element. And then I say style display none, and then it just disappears. It just disappears from the DOM. Cool. And this is what, what it actually takes. By the way, we don't need system or print lines anymore. <laughs> so and now we have night, uh, night hacking, right? One, one more. One more. One more. Thank you very much. So, yeah. So now we change the code. That's now we change the code, so it's now, okay, I'm, 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 now, now I got the sticker. So, <laughs> <laughs> so view. This was the uh, browser view. This is actually 120 lines of code with about 100 lines of system out print line, but mm -hmm. um, it's very, very simple. 
work, works very well. But uh, more interesting is actually the, uh, the snapshot itself. So snapshot is actually visualization of one property. So the idea is regardless how many properties do you have, one property is visualized by one chart and one chart is a snapshot. So my approach was a little bit unusual, I guess. So all my views do not extend from anything. It's just a simple poacher. Mm -hmm. And I am just encapsulating the charts here. And I have one method called uh, view. And in this view, it returns the node. And the one component dashboard just organize the nodes without knowing what actually comes. And the, uh, the trick is each snapshot gets own with only long property and the and the um, and the property is just the uh, the value is going to be displayed mm -hmm. so also in this case it's very narrow interface between the present and the views because each view gets its own property to be displayed but there is no coupling between them and this would be lots harder without having uh, properties in JavaFX actually yeah so even though you're returning a node back you can always update later by just injecting a new chart yeah. Changing the view on the fly, and then it'll change mm -hmm. downstream for whoever's currently looking at this. Mm -hmm. So um, exactly. So there is a, um, there's a snapshot. There are lots of the dashboard. For instance, is just the the, the dashboard view, and mm -hmm. it just knows the snapshots. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could use a list or whatever, but um, there's just a list of snapshots, and the um, the whole UI is very very simple. Just uses using HBox and DBox. So no, no fancy layouts. No fancy layout, <laughs> and just uh, one CSS style like uh, 10 pixel um, spacing. So there's actually very very easy. So this is the whole layout layouting. So I was not interested in layout rather than organization of the different parts. Yeah. So um, and even more interesting is probably what I did. There is one specific one specific view called scripts. It looks exactly like the others. So there is uh, one create view, um, which mm -hmm. um, creates a um, pop-up. And the interesting story is I use scene builder in this case. So instead of crafted by hand, I just used scene builder and um, was curious what, how it will work actually. And I would start with scene builder, but, but I started with Lightfish before scene builder was available. So right now I would just use scene builder for, for lots of stuff. And so what's your experience with Scene Builder? Did you, did you um, like the development experience for building yes. inside of Scene Builder? Yes, and um, I just uh, opened is, the Scene yeah. Builder. And this is the, um, the JavaScript, um, the uh, escalation uh, mm -hmm. view. Very, very simple. But the idea is why I like Scene Builder is not because it's a very capable tool of visualizing view, rather than it works with inversion of control, if you think about this. You and mean the controllers? Inversion of control because of the controllers, yes. Yeah. Instead of, uh, of creating source code for you, you create a controller and Scene Builder uses that. Yeah. And this is what makes this very, very interesting for real world projects. They, they, I, actually, one of the things I, I learned, um, um, so I did an initial integration of Spring and JavaFX. Of what? Spring okay. Framework. Oh, okay. You never heard of that? No. No. <laughs> Sorry. Just kidding. I know, I know. So, but one of the things I learned, which applies to um, Java EE IOC containers as well, mm -hmm. is the um, FXML actually has support for injecting mm -hmm. um, inversion of control in mm -hmm. it. So you can actually um, populate all of the um, controller methods with things that come from the container. Yes. Yes, this is what I did. I, you can inject into the controller the views. Yeah, this is why, why it works. You have yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. This is exactly. You have um, you have uh, you are building the controller. Mm -hmm. Then you can inject the views, and uh, the, the 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 tag is fxml annotation. Yeah. So well, show show your controller. I have to find that first. Uh, where's so? Wait a minute. Should be. Where is the code? Code pane. Script presenter. This is the controller. Okay. Yeah. So, and then um, where do you where do you inject your um, your view stuff? 
So the, 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 it'll, the, the, it'll inject it from the um, from the class. Yeah, I think some text fit and text story up is what I, okay. what I need. So what, what I was talking about is you can actually um, instantiate the controller object from your IOC container mm -hmm. and inject that into the um, oh. FXML. Okay. Uh, I did something similar. I had to do this in scripts. Mm -hmm. I used the FXL loader here, uh -huh. and then I use okay. the, con the presenter here with the controller. You can you, yeah. you can fetch from the loader the controller to be able to. You need you need an, an instance of the of the of the controller, right? Yeah, and you can do the you can do the opposite. So mm -hmm. rather than using the instance the controller was created, you can actually push your own controller class that you've instantiated that's container managed. And then uh, FXML loader will uh, will use, inject use the your inject controller and inject the properties into the oh, controller you get. So that makes it a lot more compatible with, like, let's say you're using um, Juice or you're using uh, the Java ECP dependency injection, and mm -hmm. you can just use that out of the box with the objects which are container managed. Yeah, this this would be great, and um, or th this would be great if I had the I here on my uh, JavaFX side, so I didn't use uh, dependency injection yeah. because it wasn't necessary in my case, but I see the point. For what I found for like very big applications yeah. is DI is actually nice because it it lets you separate out all of your, your different views and screens. Less code. Yeah, There's all less modules less and code having less code. code. So um, so we have the scripts and what I actually uh, actually exactly so I would just would like to show you the script view again. This is the scripts. And if you look at this, what happens actually? I get back to the root element from the loader. Mm -hmm. So, and the scripts here, it is somehow readable XML. And what I like here is, for me, I understand the FXML like, like scripting of the factory. So I have two approaches. Either I can build the UI by hand, what I did with just combining the nodes, page boxes and view yeah, boxes. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm using I'm using FXML loader, which creates the root for me. So I can just mitigate the risk. So in bigger projects, I can just from the outside, there is no difference whether it was created by SimBuilder or by my stuff. Mm -hmm. And even the controllers could be the same. And this is the huge point because before then I use uh, Net, um, NetBeans Matisse. And, and Swing Builder, yeah, it worked great, but it generated lots of code, and sometimes it just became inconsistent. So what we did, we checked everything in, we committed everything, it became inconsistent. You, we you just wall back, modifying the wall back, but the modification was somehow tricky. So what we did back then was, so there was um, view generated by NetBeans. We just everything which was essential was refactored out to an interface, I see. and the controller just no knew the the interface and just interacted with the interface. But right now it is a lot simpler because the view itself is clean from the outside. Yeah. And this is what makes this, this forces you to have a clean separation between your view yeah. and the controller and the job yeah. code you're writing. And in, in, in what was nice in Lightfish, so I introduced one view generated by Scene Builder afterwards, mm -hmm. and it's actually no difference at all in, in both views. So the dashboard doesn't even know whether it is generated by Scene Builder or the other. Yeah. So see, now that you're, you're such a JavaFX guru, have you considered giving any JavaFX talks at conferences? Uh, I did it in Java 1, actually. Okay. It was very well attended, and yeah. I will do it, yeah. yeah. Actually, the, my next air hack would be Java UI, and I think uh, several hours would be JavaFX. I will talk about how to structure JavaFX applications, because uh, in my project, it's not about effects, it's more about organization, because enterprise, you know, uh, uh, 3D effects yeah. in enterprise applications are somehow critical. But I, even as a Java EA developer, mixing in some small user interfaces with your application yeah. is quite easy to do since yeah. it's all Java. Yeah. And um, so this is um, JavaFX. I like it a lot. It should be available on iPads and all other <laughs> devices as well. This will be one of the key, killer features in my, in my perspective, by the way, because... Um, I, I came up with the Munich jug last night. Yeah? Yeah. And I tell you why, because if you are a Java developer, I think you don't interest it a lot in Objective-C. Except yeah. you you have a lot of Apple stickers on 
at, at home, so I would say I'd not. Oh uh, yeah, no. Well, we can we can replace one. Okay. Yeah, and we, we could do bad. that. The problem is <laughs> machine is broken. I will return it to Apple Store. So I, <laughs> if we do that, uh, I would we would need another sticker for my new machine. But uh, okay, we can arrange that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I considered to give some Java X talks, and then always did actually. I did one of the first Java X so talks. That's, that's good. Like, so you just return the machine. To the Apple Store, and they fix Glassfish for you, and you get a new machine back where Glassfish works. Glassfish? I need you. My this glass is broken as well, so there is a one pixel damaged. Oh, so uh, that's unfortunate. You can actually see the pixels on the Retina display. You can find the little. Yeah, yeah, it could do that probably. Nano, nano, nano millimeter. <laughs> nano millimeter <laughs> pixel. Yeah, yeah. Some um, several problems, but um, yeah, Javix. So what? Uh, back to Scene Builder. Scene Builder. What's Scene Builder? What? Scene Builder, yes. Hacking. Hacking. So, a wise great inversion of control is the number one. The number two, it seems to, to be used by the JavaFX guys as well, so internally. And I attended some great Java One talks about Scene Builder, actually. Mm -hmm. And they were very passionate. There were some French guys, I, I remember. Uh, uh, from Grenoble, maybe? I think. Yeah, and yeah. They, they, this, these talks were extremely great. The, the, the guy was passionate at the show, tweaks with CSS. So you can even find out from where the CSS style comes, you know, whether it comes from the from the CSS uh, default, from CSS um, uh, file, or from 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 inheritance. This was actually very useful, and CSS is also great for uh, for some kind of effects. In one project, we have to perform some val uh, validation, and the labels of text boxes have to turn red, for instance. Mm -hmm. So you could do it just changing the uh, changing the color. What you could also do with uh, with that is just to um, add and remove a CSS class, which is very simple. And the, the cool story was they um, the, the developers were not that JavaFX and Java skilled, but CSS was very simple with NetBeans. So they were able to you know to create a color and this layout, and we just. Uh, replace the CSS class and it worked perfectly. Nice. So, um, so this is the CSS. Is a, I think at the beginning I was a little bit concerned that it's too much, but right now for me conceptually CSS is nothing else than dependency injection again. So you're, <laughs> you're injecting into UI components Style. values from CSS, and CSS happens to be a standard. Yeah. Very well supported by NetBeans, by the way. This is yeah. um, you can you can um, use uh, NetBeans for HTML5 and CSS3, which Fits perfectly with uh, with JavaFX, so uh, it's a great move. Cool. And um, the last interesting stuff, probably. So, do you have some questions regarding Lightfish or, should, or structure JavaFX? Not Lightfish. Um, Lightfish is not that interesting. Probably. There has been a question about uh, missing documentation. So we got missing documentation. Do Impossible. With Lightfish, is that intentional? Missing, missing. Okay. Ah, intention yeah. JavaDoc. Exactly. Java. JavaDoc is evil, if you if you ask me. So um, <laughs> I could just for just for Marcus right now. Uh, All right, right. We Browser, both, just for Marcus. Wait a minute. Adam. So now JavaDoc. Adam Doc. says JavaFX is evil. No, JavaDoc. JavaDoc. Yeah. Now Java I'm just evil. for Marcus. I will just document. This is a default constructor. <laughs> <laughs> It creates <laughs> an object. Oh, and this is very surprising. You see, you see the power, right, of, of, of hacking and, 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 and open source. Returns a return a node, and um, <laughs> it's very valuable. So, uh, so now, now, we have, have, now we have Java Docs. Yeah, yeah. Now we have Java Docs. So, so actually, no, that that Java Doc actually is good. This because is good. because it's true. Yes, the Java doc which is evil is the Java doc where they actually explain something and it's wrong. It doesn't yes. match the code. That's yeah. evil. And this is perfect because if someone doesn't get that, you would perfectly understand what what <laughs> you know, what's that. So I mean, I hope <laughs> Marcus like that. So yeah. Marcus is invited to cr to create even more Java doc, <laughs> but uh, in his own fork, if it's possible, and he can yeah. he, he can he can do a, do a push request, and you'll never ever. Pull request. I will just try to skip the you know the, the filter out the Java doc, but everything else will be accepted. <laughs> <laughs> no, in um, what I really do in my project, I just um, I, from time to time my job is to to perform code reviews, 
And such Java doc is defect in my eyes. So really, so everything, yeah. um, getters, setters, constructors, everything is just um, not documented at all. If you would like to comment something, you should comment about the intentions and the, the purpose of the class, not you know what. Yeah, no, I think I think the um, as an example, the JavaFX team does a pretty good job with their Java docs. So they they explain at the very top of it how to use the classes and give examples of it. Um, and I've even found for the layouts and some esoteric methods, I found interesting hints and things in the Java docs, which I would have had to read the implementation to figure out otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is the point. But if you look, for instance, on the note, there is no single, you know, single line about this is a note, this is a constructor, this is how to use that. <laughs> so I mean, this is a great Java doc, but this is actually not a Java doc. This is a doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And most of the project Java doc is like obvious, obvious crap. It's like they they are documenting something which no, is just obvious. They, you know? Somebody told them they have to do Java doc. Yes, exactly. And yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> very popular, very, very popular, and 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 unit is the same. So one hundred percent unit test coverage uh, is my, my my favorite. And recently I saw a project one hundred percent test coverage without single assert. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen those. So <laughs> <it was>, uh, <laughs> yeah, every method yeah. of the API one after another. So this was the next complaint from Marcus. <laughs> where are the uh, the the J unit tests? But I could write them with one hundred percent. Code coverage in few minutes, actually. Yeah, yeah. Without assets, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so the Java doc is really great. From uh, from and it's getting better and better. But um, it started already good with Java fix. But um, the um, and the beginning was a mix between the old Comsun stuff and the new Java X stuff. Right now it's as clean and clean and it actually looks good. You even see with uh, with uh, nice images embedded. So this is actually Java Java doc, which Java doc done, which right. is usable. Yeah. Java fix so. Yeah. yeah. But I mean it's it's really documentation at this point. It's it's a lot of work to put this together. Yeah. There are lots of good examples, like uh, my favorite is Mokita as well. Uh, Mokito framework is the uh, so unit test framework and actually yeah. the whole documentation of the framework is Java doc from the Mokito class. This is actually very very well done. So you don't yeah. But actually, so now Marcus now we documented Lightfish. And and I would like to show you something. So, JavaFX comes with JavaFX Packager. And um, what, what you can do easily, so this is just a Maven integration, it can create for you a native package, which is actually perfect. Because what I always did with Swing, back then, I think it was not always legal uh, at the same time. Mm -hmm. What you could do, you can put in a folder JDK, then or JRE, then your application, and then one batch file which points to hard points to, the, to, to JRE and the application package everything and ship it. Yep. And it works perfectly. <laughs> it worked perfectly. I got. Uh, I, I so got I think it. there's a redistribution clause in the Sun in the old Sun. It. I think it was not that. So I. I my take on this was. We do it and we have to ask the legal department and the project manager said always, of course, we will do it. So, okay, now, mm -hmm. now everything is, 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 uh, is done, right, from my perspective. But uh, it was not that clean. So I think you weren't able to redistribute JRE, you had to download it, at something like this. And with um, Oracle, it's, I think, a little bit easier because yeah, there is a tool which packages the application. Yeah, so this is, this is the way I, I look at the packager. So here's applets, mm -hmm. not that good. And here's web start. It's a little bit better because you don't have the mm -hmm. plugins and it works on more machines. And this is where you want to be. Oh, amazing! This is this is your official, or with even with Oracle logo. On this is this is official because I made it. <laughs> of course, of course. This is then say something, yeah. But yeah, no, we're 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 encouraging folks to to do packaging because uh -huh. you know you can ship the JVM version you tested with. The people don't have to have Java installed on their computers. And this is going to get your application in app stores like the Apple Desktop App Store or the Windows Market. What, what is, what's Windows calling their app store? They have App Store? Windows? Yeah, yeah Windows, 8, Windows 8 has a new app store. I haven't played I think it. I the market is something. Uh, market? Is it Windows Market? So, hopefully, Maven will work with your software here. Maven, clean. Ah, sorry. Windows 
stop or store? Store. Of course. Wow, we even, we even got folks from Brazil on the line. So is it is it is it so, night in Brazil? Or yeah, let us know. Let us know if it's night in Brazil. What time is it there? Let's If you if you if you tweet Brazil, you should jump. Someone should shout out Brazil. <laughs> so now it happens. Now it um, Lightfish is going to be packaged natively. Nice. For and the DMG should be the output actually. And this is actually great, I have to say, because uh, WebStart was great technology, but a little bit shaky. And the problem was not WebStart itself, rather than you know the proxy servers and caching mechanism in enterprises, we had always trouble with that. Yeah. But just packaging everything like in single file and shipping that is actually the best you can get. And right now we do it without packaging in one project because it before that, so we do the zip distribution mm -hmm. in several countries and we get the answer, what is it? It, it works great. Well, regardless of where we move this, it just works, you know, because everything is self-contained. And I think the self-contained deployment is just great. Okay, so now we have a Lightfish DMG somewhere. Install up. Wait a minute, where? Oh, it's, it's okay, so it's morning in Brazil, it's 8 a.m. over there. 8 a.m.? Yeah, so where would it be night? Probably Asia. Asia is night now. Can be, you know. Somewhere is nice for sure. Australia? <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this is for somebody who travels as much as I do. We're I'm horrible at time zones. I have, I have no clue. I, th I think the, I think the sun rotates around the Earth, but I haven't quite figured out. This is this is what what I thought, yeah. The sun. Yeah, the sun the sun goes in orbit around the Earth, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw once in New York there was an advertisement behind, behind every cloud there is a sun. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably by, probably from a cloud, a cloud, yeah. Yeah. cloud company. Three o'clock, three o'clock. Oh, so it's it's night and yeah, that's right. They're like a four or five hours off. Yeah. So it's, it's is Jim actually up? Jim Weaver's on the line. He's in he's in um, India, Indianapolis or Indiana. But he's an Oracle employee, right? Yeah, yeah. He yeah, has to work all over the world, so <laughs> all over the <laughs> clock. Yeah, but I think he's, I think he's on that. So I think I could show you something, but I think the core pieces we already made, yeah. and yeah. without launching Glassfish, it would be really hard. Let's let's look at the Glassfish error again, just quickly, because you know we we don't, we want to see. Oh, I can, well, I can show you just. Uh, don't break NetBeans, it's a very, very sensible piece of software, wait a minute. <laughs> what I can do, I can launch at least the Lightfish without LightView. Um, Schrodinger's son. <laughs> this is how it looks yeah. without, without, uh, with all gray, sad charts. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Paranormal activity, it yeah. is the best chart, so if something <laughs> is not gray here, you are in trouble. Yeah. Performance commits per seconds, Roblox per seconds, uh, applications, and this is actually the beautiful WebKit. Yeah. yeah. And this is um, out of the box look and feel, without, without any design skills, so, which is remarkable. And the um, what you can do, you can create new scripts. This is actually the view from the symbol that you see here. Oh, uh, I see. All right, let me check something. Which is beautiful, right? Oh, it even resizes properly. Yeah, of course. Nice. I spent several minutes. <laughs> so it has to work. <laughs> cool. All right. So um, let's 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 talk about what we're gonna what we're gonna do. So for folks on the stream, um, after we're done with Adam, we're gonna swap places. Yes. And Tony and Adam are gonna interview me about the night hacking tour. And it was our idea. Yeah. And you said yes. yes. Yeah. I somehow I said yes. I, yes. I should have said no. Yeah, but <laughs> you would like to have the sticker, right? So, also, I, I was thinking what we'll do is we'll actually we'll take the camera wireless mm -hmm. and go walk outside and look at the bike and walk around and do stuff. Sure. 
So yeah. that'll be fun. Perfect. Um, and then to finish out the stream, let's let's let people know a little bit more about um, how they can get air hacks or attend air hacks. Of course. I mean, so I keep up as many as always. Perfect. So yeah. Air hacks is airhacks.com. This is a true air hacks. Yeah. And I go. was about to sue you <laughs> with night hacking, so just kidding you. Is the air hacks? You, you have to get in line. No, 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 yeah, it's okay. okay. I got a sticker. I got a sticker. Everything here right, right now. As well, we have the good. t shirt. Right. I have the sticker. So <laughs> now everything settled. Yeah. yeah. So um, air hacks. Go, go, tens. Can I come? Oh. We can connect them. I think. So we have this. We have. Um, you know, we should we should do a we should do a virtual like you know you can do air hacks and then we can put a, a camera there and, yes. and stream it on on night hacking. Yes. Yeah. Let's work on that. But this would be in March, but we can do that. Yeah. No problem. And this is a live fish. Nice. Yep. I sent out that link on the on the online stream. And if you like, just contribute or have fun with that. Cool. Thank you. All right. So upcoming schedule right after this. Um, hang five out minutes. on the stream five minutes, and we'll go back live with a reverse interview. And then at, at three p.m., which um, that's the, the, the four hours from now, we're going to do Tony. Perfect. All right. And thanks everybody for attending night hacking with Adam. Thank you very much. And thanks for coming.